Hey guys, DB Raw here, and today I am starting a brand new What If series that has absolutely nothing to do with Dragon Ball. And um, you'll probably hear some clicking noises on the mouse here because I'm actually reading directly from a story I've written for this What If in front of me. I know, no improv? Some thought going into it? What kind of What If is this? What are you doing, DB Rye? Well, this is What If Clark Told Lex His Secret? A Smallville discussion. Yes, well, I have been re watching the show lately, and it's another show I really enjoy. It's up there, like with, well, like with Dragon Ball. So I thought. It'd be fun to do a what if series involving small Velkers. Well, there's a lot of characters to play with, and there are definitely a lot of ways that this show could have gone, which definitely could have been different. So, I thought we'd have a little fun with this one. So, again, this is What If Clark Told Lexi's Secret, a Smallville discussion. So further ado, let's get going. We all know how our story begins in the little town of Smallville. Young Clark Kent's life is changed forever as he rescues a certain rich kid from his certain fate involving a bridge. As it turns out, this certain rich kid's name was Lex Luthor, son of the most powerful man in Metropolis, Lionel Luthor. And ever since then, on almost a daily basis, Lex has been surrounded by mystery after mystery as those who were infected by the media shower began misusing their power, trying to get their way. Somehow, Lex always found himself being saved from these dangers thanks to his new friend Clark Kent. Lex began investigating his new friend since it would seem Clark would never tell the truth about these incidents. And this pattern would continue for about two years, until a certain incident would change the history of Smallville as we know it. I am talking about... I'm basically saying there that um, Season 1 and 2 pretty much play out exactly the same. But now we're heading, already heading into the third season. Which is where I've decided to make this little change because I think this sort of makes the most sense. Their third year as friends would begin as crazy as the previous two. As Lex had survived an attempt on his life by his own wife who had the plane they were on crashed. While they're going on their honeymoon of all things. Wow. While Clark terrorized Metropolis under the influence of Red Kryptonite. There he encountered the biggest crime boss in Metropolis, Morgan Edge, who later tracked him down to his barn in Metropolis and attempted to capture Clark Kent and hand him over to Lionel Luthor. Though he failed miserably and was left for dead, Lex was able to find the supposedly dead Morgan Edge, now with a new face, and convinced him to confess that he and Lionel Luthor had murdered Lex Luthor's grandparents and is how Lionel was able to gain his fortune and rise to power. Now, this is where things begin to take a left turn from the series. With Morgan Edge and Lionel conspiring to drug and drive Lex insane and have him committed, Lex goes to Clark for help, who not only found proof he was being drugged, Leading to a showdown with Morgan Edge, Clark is nearly beaten to death by Morgan Edge, who had a kryptonite bracelet in the very hand he struck Clark with. And thanks to the drug in his system, Lex thought that Clark was somehow in on this conspiracy as well. And actually was about to shoot his friend dead. After all, Clark was surrounded by kryptonite, which means... A bullet would have certainly worked. Anyway. But then realizing that Morgan Edge was getting away, Lex hurried after him, only to find that Morgan Edge was speeding towards him 
in a car and Clark had no choice but to get in front of the car and smash it, revealing his powers in front of Lex. And of course, ultimately, killing Morgan Edge to his well-deserved fate. Clark manages to escape before the authorities come by. However, Lex is then taken to Bell Reeve Asylum by orders of his father. And well, a little time had passed and Lex has since sobered up from the drugs that his father and his father's workers had been slipping him and refusing to take his medication inside the asylum, which no doubt would have been the same drugs. Lionel's attempt to keep his son insane. Then, Clark finally visits Lex, and Lex convinces Clark to break him out. Meanwhile, Lionel had planned to erase his son's mind once and for all of anything that could incriminate him by having Lex take shock treatment. Luckily, Clark, coming to his convictions slightly earlier than what he had in the original, he was able to deal with Eric Summers and Ian Randall, two media freaks who intended to break out themselves. So, with that incident dealt with earlier than in the original, this led to Clark getting to Lex before Lionel could go through with his plan to brain fright Lex. Speeding in and out, laying everyone out including Lionel, Clark frees Lex, and they escape Belle Reeve. Lex Luthor's memory is intact. Later, back at the Kent barn, Lex comes to terms with everything his monarchical father had done, and of course, coming to terms with Clark's abilities, and he straight ask he straight out asks Clark about this. So Clark, are you some kind of media freak or something? Clark decides to trust and tell Lex the whole truth, telling him that he is the last son of the planet Krypton. Everything he knew about this part of his life at the time, which of course includes the symbols in the Kawachi Caves. This is incredible, Clark. I knew there was something special about you. With your abilities, Clark, nothing can touch us. Imagine what we could accomplish together. We could make this world a better place. Clark quickly deflects this idea and reminds him of the task at hand. First, they have to deal with Lionel Luther. Meanwhile, Lionel Luther has returned to his office at Luther Corp, scanning any footage of what happened to him during Lex's escape. Needless to say, he can't make sense of it, however, he does catch footage of the earlier struggle between Clark, Eric, and Ian. Yes, Lionel knows Clark was there, but luckily he didn't get a glimpse of any of Clark's powers because of the whole Eric's... Eric using the the power grid and the kryptonite to switch him like he is in the original. That still happened. It just happened earlier before Lex was getting his brain fried. Well, because Clark showed up just a little bit earlier than what he did in the original. So, with him witnessing that Clark was there, he is about to make a call to an unknown someone when um, Metropolis PD bust in and arrest him for, well, you guessed it, the death of his parents, resulting in Lionel's imprisonment a little earlier in the season. Now, for the most part, the rest of season three plays out pretty much per normal, including Lionel's departure to Paris, and, of course, the finale with um, Imposter Kara showing up, and trying to convince Clark to leave with her and go to Jorel. So Imposter Kara makes her appearance. And again, this is where we got a bit of a left turn. Imposter Kara shows up like normal. And just like the original, Lionel tries to convince Clark that Lex is hiding the fact that he was investigating him. Though, this time Lionel's plan completely backfires, for Lex already fessed up to that when Clark told him the truth about himself, so Lex told Clark the truth as well. So, that was already dealt with, forgiven, forgotten. So 
So yes, Clark knew all about the Clark Kent collection that Lex had in his secret room. And well, so on trial day, Clark and Chloe still testify and Lionel is sentenced to prison. However, Clex, uh, <laughs> Clex, <laughs> Clark and Lex are still having a bit of a disagreement, but it has nothing to do with um, the fact that Le- Lex was secretly investigating Clark. Oh no, this was about trusting this person claiming to be Kara from Krypton, Clark's cousin. Now, Lex is suspecting that Clark's cousin could be a fake. And naturally, he has his men investigate her. And um, after Clark has um, a misunderstanding with the with Martha and Jonathan Kent, the same misunderstanding they have in the original, which I forget what that was, Clark does decide to go with Kara, much like he does in the original, and heads to the Kalachi Caves. However, before they could go through the portal, Jonathan and Lex show up together to warn Clark that Kara is an ordinary girl who went missing during the first media shower. Kara intends to fight them both, and Lex opens the lead box containing the kryptonite, which is having no effect on Kara, which proves, of course, that she's not Kryptonian. Now, Imposter Kara destroys the kryptonite with her borrowed heat vision, and there's actually a bit of a Kryptonian versus fake Kryptonian scuffle between Clark and Imposter Kara, which, um, the fight pretty much more or less ended in a draw and is interrupted with the sudden voice of Jarrell, who, um, insists that Clark, or Kal-El, go to him and enter the portal, and after which Jor-El pretty much destroys fake Kara and um, attempts to do the same thing to Lex and Jonathan. Clark then agrees to go to Jor-El as long as Jor-El spares Lex and Jonathan. Now, Clark disappears into the portal. Now, Lex actually manages to um, regain his consciousness while Jonathan is... um still ends up in his coma. And you're probably wondering, does this still lead to Lex getting poison and Chloe Chloe and her father's safe house getting blown up at the end of season three? Well, yes. Lex would promise Martha that he'll find a way to find Clark and save him. And of course, hopefully you know, find a way to wake up Jonathan as well. But Lex does have his own home in the mansion. And, um, well, we both know how he likes, um, taking a sip of his brandy. At least I think that's brandy he's drinking. Could be whiskey or any other drink like that. I'm pretty sure it's brandy he's drinking. Either way, Lex still ends up poisoned poisoned at the end of the season, and Chloe's safe house goes boom, and of course, Clark is being remade into Carlisle for the um, beginning of season four, and I think that's where we're going to leave things, at least for the moment. So what do you guys think? Did you enjoy this um, part of the story? How will season four begin with uh, Lex Luthor, who knows Clark's secret, Will he still go after the free stones himself, or will he actually help Clark retrieve them? Will things in Season 4 go a bit more smoothly than they did in the original? Will Clark and Lex still remain friends as Season 4 goes along? All this, all this and more next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and if you're enjoying this series want to leave your thoughts feel free to um leave a comment i will see you guys next time catch you later to be quite honest this was actually a lot of fun to do